Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello everyone. So this is my first marketing TO event, and my name is Brian Siegel. And uh, I thought I was going to start with a joke, but I decided not to. Um, but I just want to thank the team for uh, inviting me out. And this is a subject that's near and dear to Comscore. Uh, we get asked about it all the time. And as it becomes more mo mainstream, advertisers think about how can we make this more mainstream, how can we monetize this, how can we reach funds and seats. And so obviously there's a measurement need, and so that's where we want to be. So usually when uh, I speak, I use a lot of Canadian data. The reality is, of it is I don't have a lot of Canadian data to share with you tonight. Um, I would just say we've done a lot of work in the US and globally, and some of this is coming to Canada. So uh, there's a lot of it that I have some, but I, I'd rather have a lot of more, uh, more Canadian data moving forward. OK, that's me. So the first point that I want to make tonight is that not, not all gaming is equal. So uh, all gamers are not equal. Not all games are equal. And I think sometimes we use gaming as a catch-all phrase. So, what we need to understand is there's a lot of segmentation. And the segmentation comes very, very deep. First, you got your gamers versus you got people watching games. So for us new to this uh, field, there's actually people who watch people who are playing games. I'm like, holy crap, I didn't actually think that act can occur. But then I think about it, well, we have a lot of, a lot of people. I like to watch people play sports. Some people, some people like to watch people do other things. Uh, that we measure on an ongoing basis, people like to do a lot of things. So we're in, the, we're in the business of both people playing games and people watching games. The second is that not all platforms are the same. So it's not equal. Console players are different than eSports watchers. eSports watchers are then different than PC mobile gamers, uh, PC gamers versus di different than mobile gamers, which are different than AR, VR, and any other acronym that the industry can find. So at the end of the day, one of the you know, very important things is that each of those different segmentations have a different demographic, have different penetration, have different engagement, are different uh, as they pertain to how these people buy offline and online, and their behavior is very, very different. So from a marketing perspective, each has a different marketing perspective and each has a different advertising objective. In the US, 64% of households own a device that can play a video game. There's 31 million households that have a game console that just in the US, and we saw a number over 100 billion in the last chart, that, um, that are spent on the video game industry. In Canada, uh, we have similar penetration rates. I don't know about the spend yet, uh, but at the end of the day, this is a big deal. So as it pertains to this audience, uh, I thought it'd be important to look at it from a monetization or advertising perspective, a marketing perspective. So what we, what we first realized uh, from doing some of our work is that, guess what? People don't hate ads as much as we thought. And I think that's a, if you can remember a couple of things from today and from me is, actually this is a really good point. 68% of people don't disagree or are neutral to advertising. And over half of gamers that dislike ads would be okay if they had rewarded advertisement. So you're gonna hear this term a lot and I think it's something that you're gonna continually hear as we go on, rewarded advertisement. So what that generally means is for watching ads or for being part of ads, you're gonna get rewarded. This next slide is, is one that really um, I find super interesting and I'm sorry for the very light blue, but across video gamers, PC gamers, and mobile gamers, people do not mind product placement. And most find it actually adds to their gaming experience. Followed by the next chart, which is actually where people want product placement in games that is relevant to the actual games that they're playing. So uh, when we first started talking, what was really important was that you have to be real, or be effing real, I think the, the, the term was, if i quoting correctly, sourcing correctly. So people want it to be real, they want it to be relevant to what they're doing, and people would rather have real life brands rather than fake ones. So they want to see real life brands which delivers an opportunity. It delivers an opportunity for every brand in this room. And 
product placement makes a game much more real. That's what people think. That's what people want. And that's what, as marketers, we can deliver. Now, there's different models in gaming. There's obviously freemium. There's premium subscriptions. There's all you can eat. There's, and there's many more that will come. But one of the things you'll, like, you'll understand, and as, as you develop games or you work within the industry, is people want to have the choice. Choice is very important. The choice to spend, the choice to play, the choice to pay. And I think what you'll see is that 80% of people would like a choice when they spend real money. And if you follow that up with the next chart, what you'll see is uh, of the, of the th three out of four, uh, out of the 75% of people who actually say they currently play freemium games, 73% of them actually make an in-game purchase. But here's the key, 33% enjoyed making an in-game purchase, but of those, um, they felt compelled. And I think this is where you get, you get in this, I got one minute. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, so we all heard about Stadia and eSports. Uh, one, one of the things that you'll, you'll very much understand is this is still a very unknown world. People are not knowledgeable, they don't trust in it, and at the end of the day, um, they're very still lukewarm on the technology aspect of it, So, but they want to learn more. We talked about Twitch. I want to give you some data here. Um, Penetration is increasing rapidly, 34% year over year increases, 21 million American accessed. Uh, the reach amongst 13 to 17 year olds is higher than the reach of persons 18 plus, and they spend three, 30 minutes per visit. The average Canadian spends over 420 minutes, oh, the average Canadian on Twitch, sorry, spends over 420 minutes on Twitch on a monthly basis. 420 minutes, which equals seven hours. Sponsorships of eSports has come a long way. Um, and I think this is where a really big opportunity is. Gamers um, are, are high propensity to, be, to stream sports and stream, people who stream sports or have a high propensity to convert to eSports. Sponsorship is a huge opportunity. And if you represent a, ba a brand in this room, obviously this opportunity is huge given the high penetration engagement with your brand. So in my one minute, I'll use um, a couple of summary points. Not all gaming is the same. The different demographics uh, and different people, not, it's not all a catch-all industry. Targeting is very possible. So this is just another way through DMPs um, and through data partners, you can very much uh, use the data that's out there to target people. Uh, reach is exploding, engagement is growing. Gamers have a lot of disposable income. So I didn't even get to that chart because we're in such a hurry, but the, they're super affluent, they have lots of disposable income, and they want to buy products and services. And that generates a whole opportunity. You can read the rest. Um, I was skipped over in the community section, but I just want to take one, one second. Uh, last week we lost somebody that's very important to this industry, Peter Vaz. Uh, I don't know if many of you know him. Um, he, it was a terrible loss to our industry. He headed the IAB um, on gaming and innovation. He was just an absolute guru and somebody that meant so, so much to somebody, to everyone in this room. He did one of the first media buys in Canada. He was at, uh, he was at IPG for many, many years. Uh, he died of MS and I would just say um, it's really important to support NABs and the folks out there through the events that we have. I, I've known him. He was one of my media partners when I was at the National Post. He was a great guy. I didn't know he passed away. All that passed so sad. away. Yeah. And it's just, we lost an absolute industry veteran. And it just talks to him. Many of you don't know who NABs is. And there's many, um, there's many different opportunities in this industry to help each other. It's an industry that goes through ups and downs. Let's make sure to stay balanced. Make sure to support people when they're in their downs. Oh, and this is a great opportunity. That is so, so sorry, lovely. Yes. You know what? I promise what we'll do next time is we'll have NABS come in and do a community partnership event. That's thank you for sharing that. That was incredible. Yes, I do know Peter and, and he was and he he bought the first gaming in when he was at when he was running at MT Universal when he was uh, on the GM business, right? That was the first one. Yeah, I remember it very, very clearly. Okay, so Brian is the head of Comscore. It's all about measurement. What questions do you guys have about the facts and the statistics and some of the things that you've just heard? Yes. So, hi. Uh, hi. With, with the rise of Google Stadia and cloud gaming, 
um, what, according to you, are, you know, uh, what are people saying about it? What is the sentiment? And recently I heard that Google said they will use predictive technology to try to predict the moves you're going to make um, to reduce lag. Uh, I think that's absolutely insane. So what do you think about that? OK, so um, yeah, I should have done this like caveat at the beginning that I'm not a gamer. Um, and um, I, I mean, I play infrequently. It's like, what's that? I, I, I smoke, but I didn't inhale. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I think sometimes we let technology get in the way of something that's brute and, and, and awesome. And gaming at its essence is pure, sometimes pure. You saw that image of the brain, which I thought was friggin' awesome. And it's like, ding, my brain went off. And it's like, holy cow, you hit all these nodes. And sometimes when you try to control sometimes emotion, that can hurt the actual experience. And I think you have to be... For me, I think there's great opportunity, and I think for companies like that to try to use predictive analytics to try to maneuver is going to be, in my view, and again, this is just my personal view, not Comscore, could be a mistake, and I think the same with advertisers trying to manipulate people. I think if you could be free, if you can let people be in their own atmosphere, they're going to react well to the products and services that are out there, aka the Wendy's. So I think the more sometimes you use technology in technology, you try to take away the actual human side of it, and the human side is pretty beautiful. Yes, technology and human, amazing. One more question, who's got one? One more question of someone that hasn't asked, asked a question. Anybody? Uh, okay, great. Well, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Comscore tracks a lot of online, digital, things like that. Um, for that Wendy's uh, example, they said that they saw Twitter mentions go up by 119%. Is there any way to track uh, any conversions from that and see if pe those people that tweeted that I'm only going to eat Wendy's burgers didn't actually walk into a McDonald's the next day? Wowie. Okay, look at the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, there is, I mean, I think when you get to a comm score level, you're going to, there's some things that we can measure and there's some things that we not, that we can't. Getting behind garden walls is, is become more and more difficult from a measurement point of view. Uh, I think you'll see the effects over that over time and you see regulation changing and the MRC moving forward. And I think as some of these um, things get higher penetration, the revenue starts to increase. Uh, there starts to be different metrics that are out there that don't, that don't make sense. You're going to start to see some regulation and things that come upon that. Right now, I could tell you how much time, how much engagement was spent on that during a day, how much, how much pa pages viewed, how many visitors, visits. But sometimes, actually getting from the actual behavior to in-store, behind garden walls in some of these places are going to be very hard for a company like Comscore. It's tough, but I'm going, to, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to say, as a president of an agency, that the reality is the biggest issue that we have in marketing is attention. If we know your target is in gaming and we can figure out a way to actually break through via what Wendy's did, I say more power to you and we'll figure out a way to measure it because that's the future. The future isn't in paid advertising. The future is in, is in programs that are like this. Thank you so much, Brian. That was awesome. Awesome. Let's go.